Welcome to the Toyota Solutions Studio. Joining me now, we are lucky to have Zainab Salbi. Thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure. Okay, now I'm going to have you sit back and relax for a second. I'm going to go through your many accomplishments. I'll wake you up when it's over. <laughs> Author and humanitarian, founder of Women for Women International, which you ran for 20 years. You are now um, the host of a talk show for Arab women called Nida. And you're a contributing editor for Women in the World, last but not least. Indeed. Which <laughs> is um, incredible and uh, I don't know where you find the time. Um, so clearly you are a big supporter of women's rights. What or who was your inspiration? My mother, actually. I mean, she, I, I, was, I grew up in Iraq, Baghdad, Iraq, and with a mother who made me read, since I was a teenager, all kinds of books about women's rights and civil rights in, uh, in America and all over the world. And, she would always tell me about what women go through, what my grandmother went through, what my great-grandmother went through, what she had gone through. And it's sort of, she implanted it in me almost, like what's what, what the struggle for women. And that by the age of 15, I remember my mom was driving in, in, in Baghdad, and I, t I turned to her and said, Mom, when I grow up, I'm going to focus my life to help women. And she looked at me and she said, and you can and that was the best gift she has given me. Like not only that she sort of introduced me to the issue, but that she believes in my passion and did not put it down or anything like that. And you know, at the age of 23, I found I founded Women for Women International. Um, at a very young age. At a very young age, and I have since never turned around and I mean I've since committed myself to women's issues yeah, yeah and now you have this talk show so tell oh. us about that it's it's called Nida which mm -hmm. means the calling mm -hmm. um, what do you focus on well first you know for 20 years I focus on humanitarian work you know because and, and I worked in all kinds of war zones you know from Bosnia to Afghanistan to Congo Rwanda all of that and it was more about how do we help women? How do we uh, not only help them in humanitarian aid, like, oh, let's just help you f eat, get back on your but feet. it was more like she's in a war and she needs to get back on her feet right now. You know, they can't afford to wait for the war to end and the peace to be built, all of that. So we were helping them in the midst of the war mm -hmm. to with financial assistance, vocational training, women's rights training, and a job, you know, to get them to earn their own money within, as the war was happening, as the conflict was happening. So right. that, I'm a big believer that uh, to help women stand up on their feet. But then I also decided that actually, what is the sort of the secret agent for change in women's lives? And I was always looking for that. Is it an educational program? Is it microcredit program? Is it uh, women's rights program? I mean, I'm always and I'm always experimenting, frankly, with programs right. to see what is the secret sauce. Until I realized that it's actually inspiration. And the inspiration does not come from a program. It comes from a storytelling, from media, uh, from TV, radio, books, gossip, anyway. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, it's the storytelling that inspires a woman to know, I'm not the only one who's going through this. Someone else had, and someone else had actually gotten out of her crisis, whatever it is, and got a better life. So I decided to switch from the humanitarian world to the inspiration world <laughs> through media, using media as a vehicle to sort of inspire women of how they can, you know, it's not, I'm not the only one. No, we are not the only ones. You know, how a certain person faced certain challenges and went and spoke about it, broke her silence, because that's a very important issue for women, mm -hmm. to break the silence. Mm -hmm. And within that, then you inspire other women to also get out of the darkness of their cave. You know? And you're really using storytelling to tell that message, to, to break through, to reach people, to grab their attention. Very, very much so. And the storytelling, you know, a lot of times we think women's rights issues is only poor women, third world women, refugee women. The storytelling actually happens. A woman's story is a story of, a woman's story is a woman's issues, no matter what class or region or religion or anything like that comes. So, I, you know, I found it, for example, in my case, I was hiding behind the poor woman that I was helping, refugees in my case, of saying, it's, there who are, it's them who are suffering, it is them who are going through it, and I, I don't have a story. But it took me a really long time. It took me meeting with a woman that I was helping who, shed the, who told me, if I can't tell the whole world about my story, I would. So the other women would not have to go through what they've so through what I've gone through, but I can't, you can, you go ahead and tell the story. 
And in that moment, I realized I do have a story, except I was hiding behind it. Mm. You know, I'm middle class, I'm educated, I don't have a story. The point what I'm trying to say is that every woman has a story. And it's not a third world woman story. It's, it's rich women, poor women, uh, across the sector, really. And women's rights for me is about how do we break our silence? Because when we are staying in silence, then we are part of the perpetual, perpetual cycle of oppression. Mm -hmm. How do we break our silence and have the guts to speak? And that's a very, very, that's the toughest it's journey. Yeah, exactly. That, that you know, step that is, is a, that's why we all hide difficult. behind the others, behind the poor and the refugees and all of that, because it's very hard to speak and break your own silence. So what, all the things I, I started with my own, I started with helping other women. Then I realized that I need to be the one who speak up as well about my story. Otherwise, I'm not worthy of speaking about women's rights in front of these other women mm -hmm. and asking them to speak up. Right. And then now I'm all about helping other women, creating the platform, and that's what my talk show is about, creating the platform for women, particularly in the Middle East, Arab women, to sort of speak up also about what they are facing. It's, it's a very tense part of the world right now. Absolutely. And so how, you know, so my dedication is how do we create platforms, not only in the Middle East, but also in America, to have a dialogue and a discussion of what's happening and how do we um, not only listen to each other, but also take responsibilities for what are the things that we are part of the problem and how, what can we do to, to be part of the solution. You've been recognized for your work. Um, President Clinton named you one of the 21st century heroes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that honor. You know, I'm always I'm grateful for all the honors. You know, and I'm also very lucky to have received uh, plenty from people that I admire, from mm. President Clinton to most recently Oprah Winfrey, and her coverage in Super Soul Sunday and other ways. I'm very grateful, and and yet I also think that I'm doing my job. This is I'm I'm in, I'm working my journey to implement my passion. You know, my truth. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing this not to get the honors, not to get the uh, seriously. So I'm grateful, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, um, how do I, it doesn't impact me. I'm, I'm all what I am dedicated to, so how do I live my truth every single day? And it doesn't change. It doesn't change who I am. It doesn't path. change nothing, right. nothing. I'm grateful for it. It helps because it gets more attention to the cause you are working Absolutely. on. It really helps a lot, actually. But in terms of a very personal thing is, my goal is how do I live my truth every single day and women's rights and that is living my passion. I'm doing it because I am passionate about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that a woman can do to help change her life for the better? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Speak well, your truth. I know. Well, I mean, my mission statement for my life and I came at that after much struggle is to speak my truth, live my truth, and be my truth, you know? Um, in other words, and this is, I mean, most a lot of times we find ourselves not living in our truth, mm -hmm. you know, in circumstances that we accommodate and all of that because we want to be loved and we want to be accepted and we want to have this measurement of success and for all of these things. And exactly. we put our needs last. And so how do we, for me, how do we be in truth to ourselves, you know? Because only then, in my opinion, can we fulfill our full potential? Mm -hmm. Only when you live your truth can you fulfill your full potential in giving the best of you to your community, to the world, uh, to other women. You know, so I really believe in that now. But I also acknowledge because I've walked the journey; it's very painful journey. It requires sacrifice, courage. You know guts for you know withholding people's criticism and judgments and all of these things but it is so worth it mm -hmm. the taste of freedom and truth is so delicious that even though the journey is painful every single time it's worth it to walk it over and over again I have to ask one quick last question which is um, since you're a contributing editor at women in the world who are you excited to meet here it's such a phenomenal group um, Honestly, everyone. I mean, what I love about Women in the World, both as a contributing editor as well as as a reader, you know, and a participant at the summit, is that you're constantly looking at the world from a different perspective. It's like the same country. Choose any country. You're familiar with their politics. You're familiar with their... And there's a story from a woman's angle, you know, and it's like, wow, I did not know. So, I mean, 
so every time I, and I'm a frequent reader of Women in the World, you know, and uh, today I just learned something new about elephants and the role of Middle East and elephants. It's like you're constantly learning about new, uh, uh, from a new angle. <laughs> Yeah. about the same story that you're familiar you may be familiar with you yeah. know I am very passionate about elephant for example I had never knew that you know women's role in in, in protecting elephants or um, how they're crossing over the Middle East and the ivory and all of these things you know so you're constantly learning to see the world from women women's lens and I feel like until we all learn to see the world from a woman's lens as well as men you know we won't ever have a comprehensive um, understanding of what the world stands for these days. It is eye-opening, that's for sure. Zainab Salbi, thank you so much for Pleasure. taking the time to speak with us. Thank you.